Do you find yourself getting in the same types of unhealthy relationships time and time again and you're getting frustrated, stuck and feeling exhausted? If you've never had a healthy relationship in your life, your body simply isn't wired to expect these standards to be met. So by the end of this video, I'll give you boundaries you can set to break the cycle for good and give you a tool you can use today. Like Corinne, who was engaged to marry a man who was actually a narcissist and despite her better judgment, she was completely in love with him. When she learned to embody the values and standards that reflected the life she wanted to create, she successfully ended the engagement, forgot about him, and is now living her best life in Hawaii. This is the work that I do, and I'm incredibly passionate about it, so I'd love to help you on your journey. There is a link to book a call where you can speak with me directly below. When you've been in a cycle of toxic relationships time and time again, your self-worth, self-esteem, and self-love is chipped away at more and more. Your standards get lowered. You just feel like you lose your identity. Your values that inform what you're willing to tolerate or not tolerate are not existent. You're accepting breadcrumbs. And and once you're attracted to these same kinds of unhealthy or toxic relationships, you do tend to attract more and more of them. You get used to them. Now, why not just leave? Why not just get up and leave? Why do we keep attracting and allowing these kinds of relationships to keep occurring in our life? If you grew up in an unhealthy childhood home or an environment where you had the same kinds of unhealthy or toxic relationships modeled to you, this becomes normal to you, to your body, to your nervous system, to what standards and values you just subconsciously accept. Your nervous system actually gets wired to think that love equals this kind of inconsistent, chaotic energy that you feel inside your body. And their toxic traits and behaviors of the people you then go into relationship with in your adult relationships fall on your blind spots because of your experience in your earliest relationships from childhood. Now, in those kinds of households, boundary setting just simply isn't taught, but boundary setting is a skill that you can learn, much like learning to ride a bike or learn a new language, right? Ideally, we learn boundaries in a healthy childhood environment where we see our parents model boundaries with each other and we learn them that way. But Obviously, if we've come from an unhealthy childhood and we're having these same kinds of relationships, again, we just simply didn't observe that. So it's never too late to learn this skill. It does take time, practice and patience to become more natural. It will feel a bit clunky at the start, but having these boundaries and starting to put them into place will break the cycle for you. Now we're going to focus on four values and standards that are really, really important to grow when you've come from unhealthy relationships, because they these are the areas that are generally chipped away at and are non-existent. So they are self-trust, which is setting boundaries that grow self-trust, that you will trust yourself to always navigate a situation or relationship appropriately. Self-esteem, which is where you hold yourself in high regard, right? You see yourself as worthy and you set expectations around your relationships with people and you really only invite people into your life that see you in that same light, right? You act accordingly to a person that has good self-esteem, that holds themselves in high regard, and you always act in your own best interest from that place. And like I said, only surround yourself with others that see you in that same way. We're also going to focus on self-confidence, which is where you see that you can keep doing the thing, like setting a healthy boundary and that it's safe and okay to do that. And you can manage yourself and you can manage when people push back, right? It actually takes practice to do it. And and that self-confidence builds up the more you set boundaries and follow through, manage yourself and follow through if someone breaks the boundary as well, which we will talk about. And we're going to focus on self-love as well, which is where you know what you need to feel loved and how to meet that need yourself primarily. And then the boundaries that you set actually act as an invitation to others to meet you in a place where you will feel loved or not. It's up to them whether they choose to follow the boundary or not. Now, there are actually two types of boundaries that we need to set, and most often people are only aware of external boundaries, but there are also something called internal boundaries as well. So external boundaries are pretty obvious. They're boundaries that we set with others to protect ourselves from others and others' actions and to allow them to meet our needs and to know what we need and to choose to meet us there or not. And it also gives us information about others as to whether they care about us or not when we do set that boundary and give them that kind of uh, limit to what is okay and what isn't okay for us. And, you know, many people around us that are benefiting from us not setting boundaries won't like it when we start setting boundaries. And that does, does give us really good data about how they care for us and if they really do care for us. Now, the other type of 
type of boundaries are internal boundaries and these are less kind of known, right? Normally we just focus on boundaries being an external act, but actually external boundaries start with an internal boundary we set with ourselves, which is really boundaries you set for yourself, limits you set within yourself and internal agreements that protect you from you and protect you from, you know, putting yourself in situations where, you know, others might, there might be some further issue there. But an external boundary actually starts with an internal boundary, which is this internal agreement. Now, setting an internal boundary has got to come from a degree of self-awareness, which you may or may not have at the moment, but you can develop over time. The more you pay attention to what external boundaries you're setting and when you're setting them, if you're setting them too late, you might realize that there is actually an internal agreement you haven't set with yourself around, you know, how much time you spend with someone or how you uh, contact them, right, around your behaviors and what kind of situations you put yourself into. So let me make that really clear. Boundaries start with internal boundaries and then they become external boundaries. Okay. So an external boundary starts with an internal boundary. So what are these boundaries I'm talking about? Let's dive in. Let's firstly focus on their behavior. What kind of boundaries you need to set internal and external around the person you're dealing with? And this may be someone you're in an unhealthy relationship with, or someone who you've recently exited an unhealthy relationship with, or it might be someone who you are dating and you're wondering whether they're a fit for you or not. So an example of an external boundary for you to set with them is to ask them to respect your personal space and your touch and your intimacy levels, what you tolerate around intimacy. Now, an internal boundary here is that you need to have an internal agreement with you that your needs and preferences for touch, personal space and contact frequency are valid. If you don't actually believe that internal boundary and set that with yourself, it's going to be very difficult for you to follow through with that with an external boundary. Another example is you ask them to hear your emotional needs, feelings, and thoughts, right? That's an expectation that you should be setting for others to give you space because, you know, you are worthy of that. Now, the internal boundary you need to have with yourself is I listen to and express my emotion, needs and feelings clearly as they make up who I am. So it starts internally. If you don't have this internal agreement that your feelings and needs and emotions are valid, you're going to immediately push them down instead of speaking up and asking that other person to hear and see you. And in a situation where someone might be trying to gaslight you out of having emotions or telling you your emotions are bad or telling you you're too needy, it's going to be really difficult for you to speak up and say, actually, my emotions and needs are valid in this moment. And I can see that you don't have the capacity to tolerate them because I've asked you to do that and you haven't. And you need to follow through, as I said, you know, set a, a consequence for that. And that is a way that you will break the cycle of attracting people that do constantly gaslight you or manipulate you into thinking that your feelings and needs and emotions aren't valid. Another example is where they request you to do something and if you don't want to do it, you simply say, no, I'm not able to do that. Honestly, no is a complete sentence, right? You can be nicer than that if you feel you need to. It's a socialized thing that women really don't need to do, but sorry, no, I'm not comfortable with doing that. But it's going to be difficult for you to say that and set that external boundary if you don't have this internal boundary with yourself where you no longer extend yourself or overextend yourself to others and you manage your time and energy levels as a priority, right? Your time, your energy levels are your priority. You know what you can give to others because you can say no when you feel like that will overextend you. Another example is where they ask you to do something that goes against your values, okay? Whatever it might be, it might be something physical, it might be a conversation, uh, whatever. And you just simply say, no, I'm not comfortable with doing that or I'm not comfortable with discussing that at the moment. Um, and, you, you know, they might try and say, well, why not? And you can say, well, I'm just not comfortable with it right now. I might be later on. I'll let you know. But you won't be able to set that external boundary if you don't have an internal boundary with yourself where you no longer compromise your values or engage with behavior, discussions, whatever 
that go against your standards. So a standard example here might be you don't overshare or you don't, you know, put all your cards on the table straight away, right? You only share when you feel that there's trust and respect that's been established with someone. And this might be an example where you're dating someone and it, you're just simply not comfortable with going there. And so if they push you and they try and coerce you into more information, you then need to follow through and say, if you keep doing that, I will leave the conversation or leave the room or I will just leave. All right. Another example, they do something that goes against your values, right? So you're not involved in it. You're just kind of a bystander. Just say, I will, if you continue to do that, I will leave. And again, you need to have an internal boundary with yourself where you no longer tolerate behavior that goes against your standards. So that includes the behavior of people around you, not only yourself, right? Because by being there, you're kind of a bystander and you're you're almost kind of like involved even though you're not doing it. So you have that responsibility to set that internal boundary with yourself. And if someone crosses that and they continue to do that, to remove yourself from that situation. So setting these sets of internal boundaries is going to ground yourself in the values that I mentioned earlier, self-trust, self-respect, self-esteem, and self-love. You need to make these your new standards and trust your instincts when something isn't right, right? We're, we're really grounding ourselves in what our truth is and we're not letting other people kind of coerce us or manipulate us or blindside us into thinking that their truth is more valid than our truth. We need to start with what is right and isn't right from us. So if they start to manipulate or gaslight you, which like I said, is really common for women to think that they don't have the right to have these values and standards. Like some women say to me, they think they're being selfish when they're having these. And if this is you, I want you to know that's something that's been socialized into you as a woman in the structure that our society runs on, which is where it values men and male perspectives more than women. You have every right to have these standards and values in your life. It is more convenient for men for you to not have these, but you are entitled to have them, right? So anyone that's saying you're too needy or that there's too much drama there, that is a clear sign that that person actually doesn't have the capacity emotionally or the awareness or the availability to handle their own emotions, let alone deal with yours. And that's a sign on them, not on yours, all right? It's a sign that they lack the capacity. It's not a reflection on you and they're not willing to work with you in that dynamic. And it's a clear sign you need to walk away. Now, we're not just talking about boundaries with other people's behavior or with that, that person that you keep getting into an unhealthy relationship with. We're also talking about your behavior today. So just as important around setting boundaries around others is setting boundaries around your own behavior. Now, this is where um, you have an internal agreement with yourself that turns into an external boundary with yourself that dictates what you are and are not allowed to do. Now, we're not trying to go into the whole, you know, shame thing like you're a child. We need to bring self-compassion to these boundaries as well because we aren't always going to follow through with them. But we come from a place where we know what our values are and we know that the more times we are following through with these boundaries for ourselves, the more we are being true to ourselves, authentic to who we are and really showing up for ourselves. And for the times where we can't show up for ourselves, we give ourselves self-compassion and we allow ourselves that break, not that we're being bad or anything. Now, these kinds of boundary setting with ourselves actually takes quite a lot of self-discipline, okay? So I just want to put that out there. If you don't have a lot of self-discipline, discipline at the moment. You need to just start small with little things to build up that self-trust muscle that I talked about earlier, where you realize you can follow through with your own boundaries and you can say that you're going to do something and then go do it. It really grows self-esteem and self-love, like those values I mentioned earlier. And honestly, this whole process of setting boundaries for yourself is just like learning a new language, right? Uh, this is the way you will grow those values I mentioned. So an example of a boundary around your behavior is you see a red flag with someone you're on a date or wherever it might be, and you acknowledge with yourself and observe whether it develops into a deal breaker. That's the external boundary you set with yourself. 
Um, not that you see a red flag and you're going to break up with them straight away. It might be a really big red flag and you do need to do that. Um, but you need to have an internal boundary that you will no longer ignore the early signs of red flags and problematic behavior. Because the way you've gotten into unhealthy or toxic relationships time and time again is you have ignored red flags and problematic behavior. And if you spend enough time on my channel, you've seen me talk about the attachment reasons why you do do that and the core wounds and where that comes from. But when we actually go to set these boundaries and no longer tolerate that kind of behavior, this is the internal boundary we've got to have with ourselves, and we have to follow through with acknowledging it's a red flag and observing whether it develops into something bigger and if and when it does, we need to follow through and end things. So second example, someone you really like is clearly not a healthy match for you, right? They're either hooked on someone else or there's a massive red flag there or they're just totally inconsistent or they're just not compatible, you don't have enough in common. When you see that your external boundary is that you quickly and simply end the connection and block their Number. No, there's nothing wrong with blocking. Um, it just allows you that space to know that they're not going to reach out and contact you and give you enough time to grieve because you had those feelings for them. But in order to do that, you need to have the internal boundary that you believe how people present themselves to you and you no longer hang on to believing their potential or stay for their potential because this is how you've gotten into hot water waiting for someone to change, right? They might have presented their best self to you earlier on in the relationship in the honeymoon period. And as we know, that's not an accurate representation of, of someone. We often don't present ourselves completely like truthfully and authentically. That's quite natural. But if it is a person who is a bit like has narcissistic tendencies or is disingenuous, they really don't present their true selves at the start. And when you see who they really are a couple of months down the line, their behavior changes you realize you think they've got so much potential and you start waiting around for them. So you've got to believe them when you first see the red flag and problematic behavior and no longer stick around with potential, okay? And you've, the external boundary you've got to follow through with is that simple and very swift action to allow yourself to get into that grieving period because you did have those feelings for them. Right, another example is where you speak your mind and you articulate your preferences and communicate how you feel despite a fear of rejection. This is another very healthy boundary to have with yourself when you're dating someone, when you're you know, connecting with someone. But the only way you can do this is if you have an internal boundary with yourself that you must be authentic to your feelings, to your preferences and to your needs. And that that has to matter more than this connection with this person. Because previously, the old version of you that gets into that cycle always values the connection and validation from them over what's going on within yourself. So this internal connection has been broken, lost, or maybe it was never there. And you were always focused on saying what you thought they wanted you to say or doing what you thought they wanted you to do. We have to turn that around. This internal connection is more important and needs to be valued more by you. And you follow through with that with an external boundary where if something pops into your mind and you're wondering about something, like something seems a little bit off, you actually say to them in a you know palatable way, hey, something's a little bit off at the moment. What's going on? So you speak your mind. You articulate pr your preferences when they say, hey, I'd really love to do this thing. Hey, what do you think about it? And if you don't want to do that, you actually say, actually, I don't, I don't really want to do it, but I appreciate that you're interested in it. You know, you actually show up authentically um, in a way that is still conducive to connection, but you're not completely cutting off yourself. Another boundary. So say when you're obsessively thinking about someone, you, you really like them, but you notice the obsessive thinking's coming back and you're starting to get really anxious. This is a really important boundary you need to set. You need to make sure you spend time connecting with your friends, doing your hobbies, staying grounded in all the ways that you do stay grounded before you'd even met this person, right? And give yourself space and time from them if you need it and everything in you is telling you to spend more time with them and you know get more connection with them but the opposite needs to happen because what's happening is your body is dysregulated and you've got a bit of anxious attachment going on so you need to do the things that keep you grounded but we can't do this if we don't have the internal boundary of making sure that safety in your nervous system is a priority okay if they're pulling you off and make and you're you're actually feeling like anxious there's some kind of 
unsafe feeling in your body that's probably coming from your core wounds and what's going on in yourself might be coming from them as well and you need to observe that and the feeling of being grounded and connected in your life needs to matter more than being connected with this person okay so the things that you value around your nervous system safety your groundedness your connectedness needs to be a priority here and so you follow through with that with an external boundary where you spend more time with things that get you back to that feeling of being grounded another example last example is where you might start to self-abandon right you're not acting true to yourself with someone and that could be because it's a pattern of yours or you really like them whatever that might be when this happens you set an external boundary with yourself to reach out to a known friend or known person in your support network to discuss your behavior change and strategies to return to yourself this might look like coming to a coach or a therapist or a friend who's known you for a really long time but you have a discussion with them and say hey i notice I'm not acting myself and and you know that that's a safe friend or a safe person they will listen to you and allow you to really kind of dive into what's going on but more often than not what we do is you know we continue to self-abandon we don't reach out to our support network for help so in order to do this and set this boundary with ourselves you need to no longer tolerate losing yourself and your identity in order to connect with people who are effectively strangers that you've just met all right someone that you're dating for a couple of months and if you start to self-abandon, they are still a stranger, right? Three months in, six months in, you really don't know them. The people that do know you, that you work with in a professional level, that have known you over a long period of time, or your friends that have known you for years, they're not strangers, they're people that know you. So we no longer self-abandon in order to connect with these new people who don't actually know us, don't know who we are. Now, all these boundaries might be feeling a little overwhelming right now. I've gone through 10 of them. I really encourage you to just print off a couple of the slides um, and really start looking at the internal boundaries and start to set them and embody them within yourself. But I've just got a simple tool, a really, really quick tool for you to use um, that's going to help you get started with realizing what boundaries you need to set within yourself. So I call this tool a healing circle. A healing circle works in this way. You just take a sheet of paper, you draw a circle, you can do it right now. Inside the circle, you write the people, habits, needs and values that you have in your life that you know support you. So write down the people that when you connect with them, they support you, they know you, they ground you. What habits do you have in your life that you do on a daily, weekly basis that ground you, that keep you feeling you? And these are hobbies and behaviors and you know holidays and whatever it might be um what are your needs you know that ground you that make up you and this might be something that you don't you don't really like about yourself but it is a part of who you are right um you know you are a really talkative person you need to talk a lot that is a need of yours that goes inside your circle um, and that's something that you honor and value you might be a very emotional person and that is another need of you to be able to express yourself emotionally okay that all goes within your circle you know you best now what goes on the outside of the circle are people habits and needs that don't support you you. Now, people you notice that pull you off your center or make you feel a bit unpleasant or make you feel small or don't listen to you or aren't really supportive of you need to go on the outside. Habits that you have that don't support you, um, that might be habits where you talk down to yourself or you, you know, you do things you know that you don't, that, that aren't good for you, right? Like it might be addictions or behaviors that just aren't working for you and needs as well that don't support you. So any kind of need where you're aware that you need to break that need might be something around you know needing something excessively whatever it might be just pop it on the outside of the circle and when you look at your healing circle and when you're with someone when you're dating them when you're in relationship with them you can look within the circle and on the outside of the circle and kind of assess where do they fall right and where do you feel what's your center when you're with them are you inside the circle or are you outside the circle because more often than not when we start dating someone that turns out to be an unhealthy or you know just an, an incompatible relationship for us we're actually spending more time outside of our circle than inside our circle and we actually deserve to be in relationship with someone that encourages us to be inside our circle that actually wants the best for us and encourages us to do that. So start with that. 
And if this is something you want more help and more support around, this is the work that I do directly with my clients in Heal Your Heart School. There is a link to a calendar below where you can book a call to speak directly with me and I'd love to further help you along your journey. And here are some next step videos that you can watch to move one step closer to having a beautifully healthy, secure relationship with yourself and attracting the same relationships in your life. And for now, I'll see you in the next video.